the house of the Lord, as a family, we come around and, and hear the word of God. Praise God. Because whenever we sit around and hear the word of God, you know what happens? That time is not wasted. Amen. That's what Jesus uh, told Martha when Martha was complaining about Mary. Because Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet and hearing the word of Jesus, what he, wa he was saying. Because Mary knew his words are power to come, overcome in, his li uh, in her life, and also to give him power to go through life. That's why Mary chose. And Jesus said, Mary chose the very best. One thing that Mary chose is good. What was it? Sit at Jesus' feet and hearing the word. And while you are sitting uh, today and hearing the word, you know, it's, it's, it's Jesus' word you are hearing today. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. Amen. We praise God all the time. Amen. As we are listening about grace, and today our topic is grace and faith. Amen. Grace and faith. Say with me, grace, grace. and faith. Amen. Amen. So we'll hear, and okay, next we'll hear, read some scriptures today. It might be more scriptures today. Let's read. Uh, this is the scripture that uh, I believe started this year, and we'll continue with this scripture. Galatians 5, 1 to 2. Let's read together. So Christ has truly set us free. So what Christ did to, did to us? He set us free. Now make sure that you stay free. Now Christ has set us free. Make sure, what Paul is saying, make sure you stay free. That means... At that moment in time in Galatians, people were setting again, going back to bondage. That's why Paul said, make, now make sure that you stay free. And don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. Listen, I, Paul, tell you this. If you are counting on, on circumcision to make you right with God, then Christ will be of no benefit to you. That means you go, don't go back to the works of the law. Amen? Next. I, I'll say it again. If you are trying to find favor with God by being circum circumcised, that means we can't find favor with God by our works. See, God's part is favor. He gives favor and he gives freely. We can't do anything. We can't earn favor of God. You must obey every regulation in the whole law of Moses. For if you are trying to make yourself right with God by keeping the law, you have been cut off from Christ. You have fallen away from God's grace. That means if you are doing works, you are fallen away from God's grace. Next. But we who live by the Spirit, eagerly waiting to receive by faith the righteousness of God. Amen has promised to us. That means we are waiting by faith to receive. Hallelujah. We want to receive anything from God. It's by faith, not by work. Praise God. For we, when we place our faith in Christ Jesus, there is no benefit in being circumcised or being uncircumcised. What is important is faith through itself in love. That means our part is faith. Important to have that favor of God is faith. Praise God. Next. Let's go. Let's keep going. Okay. Now, Ephesians 2, 8. See, it's very important to know where grace stands and where faith is standing. Amen? Either way, we'll go too far. It's not good for us. We'll see later. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. All right? It's not alone grace. For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Okay, next. Let's read in NLT. It says, God saved you by his grace. Stop there. It says, God saved you by his grace when you believed. That means his saving power is already here. It's supplied. But when you believed what God has done for you, you are saved. And you cannot take credit for this. You can't take credit. When you are saved, you can't say, oh, it's by my work. I did it. It's not I who did it. It's God's grace, it says. We are saved by God's grace when you believe and you can't take credit for it. It is a gift from God. If we go somewhere, for example, if, some, if I, it's my birthday today, I can demand a gift from you. 
Can I demand? It's your will to give me a gift. Either you will give me a car, new car. Amen. Hallelujah. I have to tell my date of birth. Eh? <laughs> Praise God. See, it's a gift of God. That means I can demand a gift from somebody. It's, it's, it's your free will. If you come to my birthday and give whatever you want to give, what is yours? That's how God saved us by his grace. His grace, grace is his. I can do anything to bring it. It's his, uh, it is God's gift. Next. Okay, let's see. Grace is God's part. Right? We have heard it. Grace is God's part. Faith is man's part. Right? So grace is God's part. Remember this. Faith is man's part. Next. Grace is a gift. Faith is a receiver of the gift. Right? Next. Grace is God's gift. Faith is the receiver of God's gift. So remember, grace is gift. It's always gift. It's from God. It's free will of God. He wanted to give us grace, so he gave it. But for us to receive that grace, see, we have to be a receiver of that grace. Next. Grace is not part God and part yourself. Grace is all part God. Amen? This was quoted by Brother Brian. It's not my quote. <laughs> I copied him, eh? So let's read this one. Let's read together. Read with me. Grace is not part God and part yourself. Grace is all part God. So we should be very clear and settle in our heart that grace is not my part. Grace, I can demand it. Grace, I can call out. I can do anything to, re to, to demand grace. I can't do anything. I might sell all, all my property and say, I sell it and I give it to the poor. I give it to the church. And now I'll demand God's grace. No, it cannot be. It's go, it's, grace is all God's part. Now, what is faith? See, it's faith, faith that goes and holds. It says, faith is not, not part God, not part yourself. Faith is all part man. And it's another thing that faith that you have it came from God himself. That's another part. But that's another time. But oh no, go back. I'm still there. Faith is not part of God. That means God can come and hold you and say, have faith on me. But he will give you material. He will give you what to say, have faith to receive. And it is his part. So faith is all part man. That means we are coming by faith to God. Amen. Hebrews 11.6, what he said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to receive what God has given to us. Without faith, it is impossible to receive the grace. The, the grace is like combo deal, we say, no? We go to court, so it's a combo deal. You buy three, four things together. So in grace, it's your salvation. In grace, it's your healing. In grace, it is your provision. In grace, you have a good relationship as a husband and wife, as a pair, because in grace, God has supplied the power, the ability to live life as God wants you to live. Amen. And to receive that, it's, you need faith in his word to live that way. Next. Hallelujah. Praise God. Grace is unmerited, undeserved, unearned favor of God. Unmerited, you can, cannot earn it. This is what we have to know. We can't earn anything to receive grace. No works, please. No work. But faith is the receiver of that unmerited, undeserved, unearned favor of God. That means, again, I will say, anything that God has supplied, supplied through grace we can only have it through faith. Through faith. Amen? Praise the Lord, church. Faith, as I said, it's a receiver. It receives. How many of you know the landline at home? I, I will not talk about mobile phone. You might have seen. You know the, the one that you pick it up and answer what it's called? Receiver. That is the receiver. So if the phone is ringing at home, it's going, giving a ring, ring, it's going whatever sound it is, giving it, but if you don't receive it, you will not know who is on the other side. Hallelujah. You will not know. Might be somebody calling you to give you a message. Somebody might be calling you to say, okay, you come to this place, I will take you to lunch today. Somebody is calling you to say, okay, come, I'm going overseas, my house is free, I'm giving you this. But unless you receive it, you won't know it. 
That's how grace works. Grace is given to us. Unless we receive it, it's just there. Grace is powerful. But unless you receive it by faith, it's just lying down there. Another example I can give is water in the tap. All, everybody have tap at home. See? Before the, the key, you know, the, the key that you open, at the back of that key, the water is there. Right? Water Authority of Fiji supplies water right to your home. But unless you open that key, the water won't come. But before you open the key, can you complain to uh, Water Authority of Fiji and, and complain and call them and say, the water is not coming. How you are doing work? I paid my bill last month. My bill is cleared. They will just come and say, open the tap. That's the same way we can't complain to God that you are not doing anything to me. You are not saving. No, he saved us. But to be saved, you have to receive. We have read, it's God, it's by grace we are saved through faith. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you are getting this? Amen. It's very important to understand grace and faith. Both works together. We'll see later. Next. Grace is the supplier of heavenly blessings. Faith is the receiver of the heavenly blessings to manifest on earth. Remember this. Grace is the supplier of heavenly blessings. Grace has supplied everything a man needs in his life. I will say this again. Grace has supplied everything that man lives in this life. It has already supplied a container will come from overseas to you. The supplier send the thing. It's you only. You have to go to the to the to the uh, authorities and receive that. That's faith. See, it's faith. Faith is the receiver of the heavenly blessing. You receive it and to manifest on earth. Every spiritual blessing you receive it by faith and manifest on on earth. As I said, healing is in that supply. Your prosperity in the supply. Oh, hallelujah. But it's you, it's your responsibility to receive it by faith. Amen. Next. Grace has already supplied what men need to live on earth and to enter heaven. As I said, grace has already supplied what men need to live on earth and to enter heaven. Faith takes it and what it does? Enjoys it. See, it's so simple. We make it hard. We want to do every work. We, we want to say that, oh, I have not done enough to receive this grace. No, it's only your faith. It's only what Jesus said. Faith like a mustard seed. Woo! So small, the smallest seed you can see. It says faith like a mustard seed. If you use that faith to receive what God has supplied for us, grace has supplied what men need to live on earth and to enter heaven. Next. Okay. Grace is not a license to sin, nor it a permission to keep sinning. This is where some people go one side and say, grace, I can do anything. No, you can't. See, it says, grace is not a license to sin, nor is a permission to keep sinning. So what is faith? Faith operates only in the boundary of what Jesus has already provided. See, you can't go grace and say, I can do all I can do. Anything I'll do, I'm under grace. God is forgiving me. God will not judge me. Yes, he will not judge you. But if you take wrong thing for your body, your body will be judged. Hallelujah. See, uh, the other side, faith operates only in the boundary of what Jesus has already provided. See, you can't have faith for something what Jesus has not provided. For example, we were talking to them, me and Brother Brian. We were talking about $100. You will hear later, some, some days later, about that $100. Now, if I say you come tomorrow at 10 a.m. to F FNPA Plaza, where there is Woodwork Bookshop there, I have $100 in my pocket, and you can, do, you can buy all the books that cost $100. That's my, I have supplied $100. Now you're coming and saying I can buy books worth of $120. Can I pay extra $20? Yes. 
or you can demand me to pay that extra $20? Answer me. Can you demand me to pay extra $20? Hello? I'm asking a question. No. Why? Because I did not promise you. I promised you only a hundred dollars. Hallelujah. That's what grace has provided. It did not provide you a license to sin, but live a holy life. It gives you ability to live a holy life. It gives you ability to take by faith what he has, what, what he has given. Jesus has given to us. Hallelujah. He has given you salvation? Yes. He has given you healing? Yes. He has given us, did he told us that we can live in prosperity life? Yes. And those things we can ask in faith and, and, and we can have it. But if you are thinking you can go after somebody else's wife or husband and you're praying and fasting, you won't get it. Remember this. Or you will say that I will go today to the bus stand and I will see somebody first coming and I will say, that's my wife. Oh, that's my husband. And when you go there, you saw somebody coming, and after you talk to that person, and you know that person is married, and still you go and fast and pray 21 days, 40 days. You might pray, pray for the whole year, but that is not in grace because you are going after somebody else, husband or wife, that's adultery. Hallelujah. Simple as that. Might be very high way I said it, but it's the way. You can't tell, might be your neighbor is always hating you, always saying things to you, might be throwing, throwing stones at your house, and you'll pray, Father, you take this one, kill this one, take this one away. You fasting and pr prayer, no, it will won't happen, because God said, love your neighbor or love your enemy as, as yourself. But when you ask, God, help me, I, uh, make me that I will love this, my neighbor, that will happen for you. Praise the Lord. It's very important to understand. That's why it's very important to pick up this book. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night. So when you meditate on day and night on this, what will happen? You'll know what God has provided for you. You will stay in the boundary. You won't go out of the boundary and asking for it. It's like you are showering, you shower, you're doing shower, bathing, and the, and, and the shower is open. You put all the soap around you, the water is running here. And you are crying here, help me, Lord. No, you come under the shower. Praise the Lord. See, when we make mistake what grace is, or when we know what grace is, our life will be more easier. Amen? To live. Oh, glory to God. Next. If God has not already provided it, independence of your effect to your need, your faith can't make it happen. Settle it down. If you are praying for something and you are not getting it, check it out what you are looking for. If it's not in the promise of God, I tell you it won't happen. But if it's in the promise of it promotion is promised in, in the promise of God? Yes. If you are seeking for promotion, it will come. Because the Bible itself clearly says promotion does not come from east or west. It comes from our Father, comes from God. So it's in the promise. So if you are expecting promotion, if you are expecting increase in your income, keep expecting. Faith is like magnet, I would say. It's like magnet, it attracts. It pulls, it pulls into our life what God has already given to us. Oh, glory to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Next. Faith is simply our positive response to God's grace. Faith is not something you do to get God's response. Remember this. Now we're going to listen to this. I'll read it again. Read with me. Faith is simply our positive response to God's grace. Faith is not something you do to get God's response. Next. God has already done it. That means God has already provided it. What does faith do? 
Faith is your response to what already done. Amen? Faith is your response. Next. Faith does not move God. It moves us to position ourselves to receive what God has already provided by grace. Okay, next. Grace and faith, they work together, not separately. Remember this. Grace and faith, they work together, not separately. They don't work separately. They don't do anything separately. For God has supplied the grace. God has supplied grace. But if you don't have faith, you can't receive that grace. Let's read next one. Let's read Romans. Okay. Romans 4.16. Therefore, inheriting the promise is the outcome of faith and depends entirely on faith in order that it might be given as an act of grace, unmerited favor. That means whatever we, are, we want to inherit, what God has promised, it is entirely on faith. It is entirely on faith. It is entirely up to me. In the beginning, what, not in the beginning, in Genesis, uh, one of the book, what God said, today in front of you, I lay blessing and cursing, life and death. And he said, it was like A, B, and C, choose life. Even he gave the answer, choose life. So to choose life, he has already said it. Choose life, but what is entirely dependent to receive those life, that blessing of God? It is entirely depends on faith. For example, you might be leaning, you might be thirsty, right? You are thirsty, you are really thirsty, but you are leaning beside a water well, and you are saying, I'm thirsty. It's a well, right? How many of you know what a well is? LAB, we see a lot. Even I use it. So you might be leaning the beside there and you're saying, I am thirsty. The bucket is there. The rope is there. You can put your, the rope in, like tie the rope in the bucket and put the bucket inside the water and pull it. But you're not doing it. But you are saying, I am thirsty. It might be God's will for me to be thirsty. God wants me to be thirsty. No. It's not God's will for you to be thirsty. He wants to quench your thirst. Praise God. And the water is already provided. What you have to do? You have to put the bucket in, in the well or to the water, where the water is, and pull it out and drink it. That bucket is your faith. Whatever you need in life is already provided. Only thing you put the bucket inside, and that is your faith, and receive it. You might have, again, I'll come to the $100. You might have $100 in your pocket. I don't know why I'm talking about $100 today. I don't know. I'm a magnet and the $100 is coming to me. <laughs> okay. You might have $100 in your pocket and you are hungry. And you're standing nearby a restaurant. And you are complaining. But you have that $100 which you can go inside the restaurant and buy the very best meal to get your stomach full. See, there are sometimes we do the same. What God has provided, but we're looking at it, but we, we are not receiving it by faith. Because God said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. That means without faith, we cannot receive what grace has supplied. We have to hold it and say, it is mine. Because God, we have heard this too. We can come boldly to the throne of grace. To obtain mercy and find grace there. We can come boldly to this grace where everything is supplied and say, Father, it is mine. I'm taking it. Why? Because my father has said, it is, it is yours. So I don't have to go and ask him. I will go and say, thank you, Father. I will go and say, thank you, Father, for this car. Thank you, Father, for this house that I did not build, that I did not pay for it. Thank you, Father, for this, my promotion. Thank you, Father, for increased income. Thank you, Father, for healing, because you have provided healing through Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. It is been provided. Next, let's see this. Read with me. Salt is made from magnesium and hydro. Okay, those two chemicals. 
soul, uh, salt, salt, if you want salt, you should know that those two chemicals are together. As I said, faith, grace and faith works together. They don't work separately. Let's see next one. See, when it's separated, those two chemicals are separated, it's not salt anymore. See, one of the liquid is danger. If you drink, it's poison, it will kill you. So if you hold grace and say one side, I'm going grace, I can do all things. I can do everything. Never mind whatever it is. I can go after somebody. I can drink and drive. I can whatever. <laughs> and then again you go this side and say, faith, I have faith for this. I won't go again <laughs> to the bus stop. <laughs> but you can say, I have faith. What God has not provided, it will kill you. So don't separate them, take them. You should know what grace has supplied, and you should know that I can have it by faith. Hallelujah. Even, even you can say, you might standing there and say, you have heard about salvation of God that he has provided. And you might stand there and say, oh God, if it's God's will, I will be saved. If he want to save me, he will save me. If he want to take me to heaven, he will take me to heaven. But you don't have any faith. You don't want to believe and receive it. But you are saying one side because of the grace of God. You have read only one side. It, you are saved by grace. You are saved. I am saved by grace. I am saved by grace. But you forgot about it. It's through faith. You're standing there. I will, I'll tell you, you are in danger of going to hell. Because if you don't receive that salvation, or you don't receive by faith Jesus in your life, you still are not saved. Amen? So you can't do that. See, 2 Timothy 2, 3 to 4 says, it says there, God wants all men to be saved. It is God's desire for all men to be saved. Are all men saved? No. See, it, but it's God's desire for. Why is his desire? Because he supplied this salvation for everyone. But unless or without faith, you can't receive those salvation. That's why today people even hear about Jesus. They know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. They hear about him, but they are ignorance. In their ignorance, they don't want to receive him. After that, they don't reach heaven. Even in Isaiah, book of Isaiah 45, to, uh, 22, it says, God says, look unto me and be saved. Look unto me and be saved. All you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. There is no other. Hallelujah. Amen. So to be saved, to receive what grace has given to us, we'll, need by, we'll have it by faith. Hallelujah. How many of you understood till now what I'm saying? Now I say this $5 is yours. $5 is yours. This $5 is yours. Is it yours? No. This $5 is yours. $5 is yours. Anyone? $5 is yours. Hallelujah. You know what's happening right now? This is what God has said. Salvation is yours. Healing is yours. Prosperity is yours. And I'm saying $5 is yours. <laughs> See, it could be anyone, not only Elisha's. It could be any one of you could have run and took that $5. You know what exactly what's happening right now? What you did. God has supplied everything through his grace in Jesus Christ. But still we are standing there and thinking, is it mine? Is it mine? I should get it. Is it mine? <laughs> because I, you know what? I tell you what exactly happened. About two years back, I missed diamond like this. I went to one of the uh, uh, seminar, and that man came from overseas. You brought the diamond. And he was showing that. And I know, because I've already seen this, I heard this, I was supposed to go and get it. But I was feeling ashamed to go there. The crowd was there. And I missed it. But that day I learned a lesson. No. That's what we do sometimes. We miss the blessing of our Heavenly Father because we are not sure. Or we are doubting, Can I, is it mine? But I want to tell you today, God has already provided for you. 
You only have to receive it by faith. Woo, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Somebody come. Come, brother. Samal, brother, you should have come before. <laughs> Praise God. If I knew Elisha would have come, I would have be, brought a bigger note. Eh? <laughs> oh, glory to you. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's read Romans chapter 5, verse 17. Amen. Let's read. For if because of one man's transpass, lapse, offense, death, reign through that one, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace, unmerited favor, and the free gift of righteousness, putting them in right standing with himself, reign as kings in life through one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. But how you receive that overflowing grace, you have to receive it by faith. You receive. This. See, receiving is faith. Right? Next. See, through him also we have our access, entrance, interaction, by faith into this grace, state of God's favor, in which we firmly and safely stand. And let us rejoice and ex exult in our hope of experiencing and enjoying the glory of God. Oh, hallelujah. Let us experience that glory of God. How? By faith. He said his glory is with us. He will never leave us, never forsake us. Never mind my, my, my body is feeling or not feeling. See, his glory is with us all the time. We don't have to know that he's here by feeling. But you, one thing, when his glory comes, you will know it. See, first it's not that, that you have to feel. My, this hair is standing or no? His glory will be here. Or if it's here, we'll be shaking hand and he's here. No, no, no. We don't have to shake anything. We should know. See, his word is very clear. Where two or three gathered, I am in their midst. Woo, hallelujah. Two or three gathered. That means if we are getting together, he is in our midst. And more than that, we don't have to gather two or three. He is in me. If I'm standing alone here and praising him, he is here. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 12.9. It's, Paul is talking here. He's saying, but he said to me, who is the, he? Jesus is talking to him. Because he was in, in a situation where uh, 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 the Satan was bu bu buffeting him. He was having problem. He said, and he prayed three times. See, one thing I saw here, he prayed, Paul prayed three times that this thing will be taken away from him. Paul prayed, prayed three times. You go and read. But Jesus said to me, my grace, my favor, and loving kindness, and mercy is enough for you. Who Do you understand? Never mind what situation you have. You don't have to ask God by faith, receive it. He says, my grace, what I've given to you, it's enough. Sufficient against any danger and enables you to bear the trouble manfully. That means whatever trouble you're coming to you as a human being. His grace is enough to carry us through. Hallelujah. Will you believe today? Will we walk in the power of God's grace and say, God's grace is enough for me. Never mind what kind of sickness coming towards me. I know Jesus is my healer. He has already provided the healing for me. Oh, no matter if you, you are going you in need, you will know that God's grace is sufficient for me. In His grace, He has already provided what I need for. By faith, I will receive it. By faith, I will receive it. You know, Psalms 23, what it says, The Lord is my good shepherd. The Lord is my good shepherd. Who is this Lord? The Lord Jesus is my good shepherd. Who is saying here to Paul, he says, my grace is sufficient for me. Even that day, he was saying, the Lord is my good shepherd. David was saying that his grace, his mercy, is sufficient for me. Why? Because he says, I shall not lack. Woo, hallelujah. 
you can go and say the Lord Jesus is my good shepherd and I'm living in the fullness of his blessing. I'm living in the fullness of his blessing. I'm living in the, in the healing that he has provided for me. I'm living in full health. Oh, glory to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. There are so many scriptures that I want to say, but I will end here. There are so many. There are so many examples of the grace of God that came and, 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 and the people in that time, they receive it by faith. Even the day of Pentecost, when, God, when Jesus promised that when I'll go up, I, I, I will send the Holy Spirit. See, those disciples were not just on the upper room and talking to each other. No, they knew that what Jesus has promised, it will come. That's why they were ready, ready themselves to receive it. See, if they were not in the upper room, the Holy Spirit would have come, they would have not known it. The power from I would have come, but they would not receive it. But they were there by faith. They were holding to their faith and standing there praying in one accord. And when the Holy Spirit came, they experienced it. That same thing happened to Paul when he was, he was sold that time. He was going on the road to Damascus to, to bring all the people. To, to all the disciples who were, who, were, who, who were the believers, the disciples who were preaching. But what happened? Jesus came and visited him. Hallelujah. Today, God is calling you. Even those who are listening, God is calling you. Are you going to respond and say, your grace is sufficient? I receive your grace. That day Paul received. He said, what? can I do or what shall I do? And Jesus gave him instruction. Saul become, became Paul. Why? Because by faith he received it. Even for Abraham, I'm about to finish. I'm just summarizing other scriptures so that you can understand. When, when Abraham in, in Joshua chapter, uh, chapter, okay, chapter 22, I believe, somewhere there in Joshua, Joshua uh, 24 actually it was saying that he was talking about uh, to the people and he's talking about Abraham. Before a God called Abraham, he was an idol worshiper. See, he did not deserve the blessing of God. It was unend. He did not did anything to receive God's blessing. But God came to him and what he said, you move out from your father's house and I will bless you. What Abraham did, he received it. He took hold of it. He take what God was giving to him. Today is your day. You take what God has give, already given you. It's not going to give you, brothers and sisters. He has already given you. Oh, hallelujah. He has already given you. Let's stand together. Let's stand together. Don't offer it, brother. I want to pray for everyone. Hallelujah. First of all, I want, to, I want those who are listening. I want to say, if you want to receive Jesus Christ and Lord and Savior, don't let this day go by. And even who are here today, if you have not received Jesus Christ and Lord and Savior, pray with me. And I want all of us to pray so that you can help the other one. Say with me, Heavenly Father, I believe in Jesus who died and rose again the third day for the forgiveness of my sins. Jesus, I make you the Lord of my life to follow you and save you from this day forth. I ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit to fill me and guide me all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your grace that you have supplied, Lord. As you told Paul that my, your grace is sufficient for me. And Lord, Paul knew what you are saying. And he hold your grace. He take, took your grace, what you supplied for that moment, Lord. And he moved forward. And today you have supplied for everyone, Lord, who are here and who are listening, Lord Almighty God. Father, I speak healing right now in the name of Jesus. I speak prosperity in the name of Jesus. Blessing, Lord Almighty God. Father, I speak right now people who are looking for work, job, Almighty God. They might have applied for the job, Almighty God, and wait 
waiting right now. It is moving in their way, Lord, in Jesus' name. Increase is coming. Oh, promotions are coming in Jesus' name. Oh, Father, I thank you for your wonderful blessing. I thank you, Lord Almighty God, that your blessing, your favor, your goodness and mercy is every moment in the lives of, of, of your children, Almighty God. Every moment, Lord. Father, I give you praise. I thank you for your beautiful word that you have said, Lord Almighty God, that we hold of your grace, Lord, and take it by faith, Lord, knowing what you have supplied for us. And Lord, today we know that in your grace, in your plan of your grace, everything is supplied, what I need in this life. Father, I give you praise. I give you praise. I say thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen.